How's it going everybody? Welcome to another Toon Boom Harmony tutorial. My name is Frank Summers. In this lesson we're going to be talking about function curves. If you're coming from Flash or if you don't have any sort of background in After Effects or any 3D application, uh, function curves can be something that are maybe a little hard to understand at first. But I think at the end of this we'll have a bit of a better grasp. Why don't we hop into Harmony here and I'm going to first give you a quick idea about how function curves work. If you don't know how to pull them up, generally every layer down here has a little plus and we hit that and that gives us all of our functions that are attached to a particular layer. And if we are to double click any of them, where are you? Well, I guess I need to have a function on there. I'm hitting a keyframe. There it is. Whew. My double click was failing me. Uh, it pulls up our Bezier editor and we can get keyframes in here and we'll see like this curvy line going around and a lot of people at first glance don't quite understand what's going on there. Um, let me just give you a brief uh, idea of the best way to think about how to visualize them in your head if you don't have any concept at all. Uh, you might be familiar whenever you see a drama on TV you'll see the patient laying in the hospital bed and they're dying or losing them and they show the I don't know what it's called but the heart rate monitor right and it's got uh, you know it's going like this, it's going like this. Oh no, we're, lo we're losing him, we're losing him. Oh no, he's dead, right? So when we see a lot of this activity going on, that means he's having like a cardiac arrest or something like that, right? Like, oh my God, uh, here comes the aliens. The aliens are coming, oh, I'm having a heart attack. And then, oh, whew, the aliens are gone. Oh, I'm relaxed now. So it's the same idea with our function curves, right? Whenever we see our function curves having a lot of up and down in them, that means there's a lot of activity. The movement is going to be happening. There's going to be more movement happening. And when we see a straight line going across in our function curves, that means there will be less movement happening. So why don't we quickly draw just a circle and set our anchor point. And, oh, there must be something lurking over here someplace. Let's, there we go. There it was. Uh, let's just take our circle, put them over here. Let's expose our circle, hitting F5. And we'll just put a keyframe at the end here. Make sure we have another keyframe at the top. And we'll just drag him straight across. And we'll even show our path by hitting show um, controls. That shows our path. And we hit play. There it goes. It just goes from A to B. Looks great. Uh, now the thing about, every, about a element, uh, our X, Y, and Z coordinates are all separate. So this is our X coordinate going right here from left to right, so to speak, and our Y coordinate is what's going on up and down. So if we double click our, if we just kind of go through here and I'm going to just put some keyframes in our Y. So I'm going to use my advanced animation controls and I'm just going to move our circle in the Y. Move along in time. And I'm, I'm randomly doing this. I'm just making it go up and down. There we go. And I'm just moving it up and down in Y. So now we've got this kind of action. Bop, 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 bop. It goes up and down, right? And if I was to double click our Y, we have no E. I'll make it a little bigger so we can see. We have no E's going on. As you actually can see, it's kind of mirroring our path, right? If we're, I like to just point out, if we're using a peg, peg by default uses 3D paths, which is kind of a, it's a little bit of a fancier term to describe that it's just taking the X, Y, and Z coordinates and it's crushing it down to just one keyframe. Um, uh, so that allows you to kind of give maybe a smoother arcs to your paths by default. You don't get as much, but that kind of comes at the sacrifice of control. You don't, you can't really control the X, Y, and Z coordinates on there independently unless you set it to independent coordinates. Uh, so let's get back to this. So this curve right here is just our Y value going up and down. And right now it's moving in a very linear fashion. We move it out of the way. And it just hits enter. And as you can see, it's kind of going up and down and following our, in a very linear fashion. If I was to highlight any of these, and if I change this little guy to smooth, if I start pulling on these, you can see that the curves start smoothing out, smoothing our animation out a little bit more. And so now you can see how it affects the, cur the, the path of the curve. Excuse me, the path of the circle. And if we keep th this function here, the corner straight and smooth option is independent for every keyframe. So it allows you to control what your animation is doing 
uh, how you would like it to do, how you would like it to behave on a particular keyframe. So here we might want our circle to really kind of be sharp. And I'm gonna really tweak these for the sake of comparison, I'm really gonna tweak, the, tweak this. So we got a really uh, sharp curve going on in here. And when our circle gets to that point, whoop, it's al you almost can't even see it, it skips. And if I was to take these keyframes, let me stretch this out so you can see it. And if I was to take these and stretch them up even higher, It's the same concept as our, let me extend my scene a little bit so we can get some more footage. And let me just pull my circle out a little straighter. It's the same concept before of, I was talking about before with our, our heart rate monitor. The more up and down we got going on, the more rapidly our animation is going to be, uh, is, that's going to be happening. And then eventually once it gets to the end, oh, it, it's done, there's nothing going on here. So I can go in here, I can even just, I can add my keyframes in here from the Bezier control, and I can add more in here. And now like I'm, I'm gonna t tweak it like no one's business just for the sake of, um, for the sake of uh, demonstration purposes. I'm gonna add a ton of keyframes in here. And I'm gonna get them going, I'm going to make them go up and down quite a bit just to help show uh, what I'm talking about. And these are really tight together. And if I play this back, this circle will be going up and down like crazy. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh my gosh! Ah. So again, if we have a very smooth, if we take this keyframe and just smooth it, keep it a little smoother. As, it, as, our, as our circle comes to the end here, into a little more of a gentle slope, the animation will reflect that. So we, oh my god, I'm having a heart attack. Oh, it's over. Whew. So I hope that kind of makes sense in terms of how function curves work. Uh, just the more more up and down movement we have going on, the straighter they're moving, uh, the quicker and more erratic your animation will be. Uh, I hope that clears everything up. If there's any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the description below. Um, you can hit that red subscribe button to keep up with me, and you can check me out on Twitter, Google+, Tumblr, and Blogger. Uh, you'll see a link for my Wednesday Lunch Live sketch. I believe Clover is there. Please check that out. I do a live sketch every Wednesday uh, at 12 noon. We do it for a half hour. Sometimes I go longer, sometimes sometimes longer. Uh, sometimes I even work on the piece after the recording is done. And I also have more Toon Boom Harmony tutorials. Click that link, and it'll bring you to the playlist. Also, which is not on here, please, you know, uh, check out some of the other animation I do on my YouTube channel for, for a good time, for a great time. You guys have a good one and take care.